Who should be more embarrassed? Sheree or Phaedra? Let's watch the episode and see. We're gonna work it and be seen. So we open with Sheree running to Phaedra, her free attorney, because she's been served. Sheree, you should be used to getting served. All the debt you run up. Oh, the shade Phaedra threw. This is an emotional case for Sheree because it's dealing with something near and dear to her heart. Her money. Oh, oh, oh. Phaedra said, well, now I'm going to have to start billing you for my time. You better put his ass in county. Um, how you going to bill Sheree? That, that's a waste of time and typing. Ah, uh, Sheree, the court's gonna take Bob's side because you're a crooked criminal and you're crappy at it. I remember those documents where you wouldn't sell the furniture to, so you could keep your house. I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. And now we have Candy Coated Nights with Marlo and Charles Grant as guests. So Charles Grant talked about how Atlanta is a pretend city and he's pretending he has the hairline to carry off those struggle braids. So this is when Candy asked, well, Marlo, how did you get your money up? God, I'm a worker in my spirit and I've always been very good with money. Mm-hmm. Just say it was your boyfriend's allowance and those clothes are boosted. This is back when you had body and you were actually serving the high-end fashions because you could fit the sample sizes. But um, now, like Nene, you need to have the coin to get it made in your size. It's okay. It's grown woman weight. But, uh, girl, you be cramming yourself in that shit, you can tell. At best, that's a sale rack Sally. You just like, look, they only got an eight left. I know I'm a 12, but I'm a fit in it. Feet coming out your shoes looking like bread baking. It ain't cute. Child, you ain't got peep toe, you got hang toes. Oh, good, it's a Kim scene. I needed to heat up some food anyway. Oh, Lord, Nene and Cynthia at the vintage store. The bohemian leading the tasteless. Nene must have got this cap wig because she could just wake up and go. Don't even got to shake it. It's a just go wig. It's just a cap. Just It's giving me an Ethel Merman tea. There's no business like show business ass wig. Oh goodness, Charade had gotten herself a Porsche and Phaedra coming over looking at it like, <laughs> well, I guess I ain't getting paid. So Phaedra telling Charade, girl, you better dress poor at this hearing because uh, the judge needs to believe you're broke and all this fronting and faking you doing ain't gonna help your case because you are broke as a he-hang with an air mattress for your son. I mean, your son has an air mattress. He's never going to sleep in your mold-filled edifice. Mm. Oh, Lord, the lesbian-ass outfit they picked for Sheree to go to court in. Mm. So now we got Candy and her cheap vibrators. No, thank you. Oh, goodness, Kim again? We don't care about her or that kid. Oh, they got Sweetie a little wig. She thought she was doing something. Because them braids were not the business. Not for her. It's not so much the braids, it's the piss poor install and that crinolon that they used. Crinolon, crinolon, it is a weave time indicator. Crunchy crunch, itchy itch, it is a weave time in. Decatur. Now we have Sheree at her pretend office. So the assistant said, girl, I went all the way to the hair salon and Sheree ain't have her check. Now I know I normally would just wait for them to bring the check, but, but I checked in cause I'm a friend and she ain't have no check for me at the salon when I went all the way there, got on the five and everything, or the whatever they have there, the belt line. Phaedra said, I ain't making no money off the case anyway. Girl, you can't come up with a quick five grand. I'll tell you this, Sheree, like, uh, I'm gonna let her win first and then I'm gonna pay. And the truth is, all of Sheree's lawyers have lost miserably for her. So I kind of see why she was like, I ain't paying you for this shitty service. Y'all letting Bob Whitfield outsmart you? I don't know, you might have to cut your rate too. So after Sheree was able to unload a bag or two at Plato's Closet and a consignment shop in Atlanta, Phaedra finally gets her check. And you know she need it. 
Oh no, Candy and Riley, fast forward and best fiends. So now we got Sheree getting ready to go to court, putting her glycerin tears in, calling her mama. You ain't gonna get shit, Sheree. Then again, you should be used to it, or you should get used to it, because boy, I want to know when you're going to be able to refurnish your house, because you're probably never going to be able to afford it. And your house will turn into a museum like Karen's very quickly, because everything you got was very trendy. Therefore, it becomes very dated in about five years. And you've been in there for three. The clock is ticking, Heffa. Oh! And this is where we see Cairo come out that room with the air mattress, and he looked like he had a rough night's sleep. But Sheree got $5,000 Hermes bags and new Porsches. Mm, new poor choices. They think we care about Kim's parents. So now we're at court with Phaedra and Thelma, the owner of Chateau Sheree. Now, she says Bob thinks he's above the law, but, but you're the one who's been arrested for petty theft and check fraud. Those things are facts. Child, we got Bob and his cockeye going over them documents. And I guess he's able to really check. He's able to look with one eye at a cross T and the other one is scanning for dotted eyes. I mean, that eye give you a marble T. It's here. It's there. It's everywhere. That's how he was able to outsmart Sheree. That fucker is on the loose. It's our coming. <laughs> Sheree wants him to get out there and get a job. Why don't you, honey? Well, you did, but you couldn't keep it because you're lazy and unmotivated. <laughs> so the hearing was moved by Bob to September 1st at 3 o'clock. Phaedra didn't have shit. I mean, it's like she doesn't even practice law. Sheree looks so crestfallen, so defeated. Huh, you're just beginning to fall down the stairs of life. But I'll say Phaedra told her you better put his butt in jail, but you didn't want to listen. And so he beat you to the punch and walked out of the courtroom giving you a mmm. -hmm. Sheree gone say she was outsmarted by an ex-football player who represented himself. Well, so were you, Sheree. So were you. So now we got Sheree, Phaedra, and Candy talking about court at lunch. Oh, goodness. Candy said the vindication will come in your future success, Sheree. But there isn't any future success. We are a decade later and there's no success. None. Not in fall, spring, or summer. Sheree is simply living a life as an example of what not to do for others. Well, that was the shit. So we open with Sheree saying, I'm not doing good, Phaedra. That hearing went terrible. I thought it went well. How could you think that went well? <laughs> Phaedra said, uh, I didn't like the fact that you threw me under the bus in front of Candy acting like I'm a crappy attorney. But you are, Phaedra, when a case. <laughs> Phaedra said, look, I didn't get paid till 3.30 day prior, so I really shouldn't have been doing anything. Phaedra, I gave you the money. I gave it to you. I gave it to you at the last minute, and that means, uh, I know you're, I'm no fool. I'm not going to put my name on a case and then have to work it or recuse myself and embarrass you in court because I ain't got no money. Phaedra said, I I'm going to drop you as a client because this is going to affect our fake ship. I mean, our friendship. Oh, goodness. Grand Lizard, fast forward. So we've got Cynthia at an art show, and honey, she's working it and being seen. Oh, goodness. Nene here. Look like she actually put a little spritz in that head, but we ain't seen the back of it yet. But she's going to say, I'm not a collector of the arts. Really? No. Child Marlo here and Cynthia talking about it's a stamp of approval from Atlanta's high society. That heifer got one heel out the gutter and she high society. Okay, Sin Sin. And Candy telling the girls, you know Marlo said she got her money from God. So Candy pressed Marlo again on where she gets her coin. Marlo said, well, I always dated wealthy guys, so I did get money from them. What's theirs is mine. She said a man should always know what a woman needs. If I have to ask you, you're not the guy for Marlo. Oh my goodness. P. 
Peter and Cynthia are doing a power couple photo shoot. Honey, maybe they should do a celebrity and hanger on. Oh, goodness. So Cynthia done forgot to send out the invitations for her barely agency, so she'll barely have a crowd there. Peter got a lot of nerve throwing this little mistake in Cynthia's face every 10 seconds for five minutes straight. Jeez. Do we bring up Uptown? Do we bring up Bar One? Do we bring up that place that closed in Miami? Do we bring up your tax debt or the fact that you had to spend a weekend in jail and whine on social media about it? Do we bring that up? Well, I do. Peter Thomas, if you don't shut your mouth. I'm hard on Cynthia because nothing was given to me except the 50000 she gave to you. Or do you feel like you paid for it in dick? So Peter just ain't going to do it because he ain't shit. Because he's Penelope Thomas Bailey. And lazy is her watchword. All good, Kim. I can get to best fiends. This is when they were getting Kim ready for tardy for the farty. Because you don't even see her with the cast anymore. It's so easy to block her out. Nene just said, Bryson, please don't be 30 with like 100 kids or something. Well, um, not 100, but three. I heard that he had gotten himself together with some type of car business. I'm hoping it's true. I mean, you can't be ugly and poor. And you know he's ugly. He grown. Grown and ugly. No, Nene, he is not wearing protection. He is out here raw dogging, and that's why you're a glam mom. So Lady Donna Juana is telling Candy we can't work with people like Kim anymore with this mama I want to sing bull crap. You mean like a mother's love, which couldn't even make it out of Atlanta? You mean something like that? Something truly, um, I believe the phrase is chicken shit? A chicken shit gig? No more chicken shit gigs? Okay, Donna. Man, that makes me think of Miss Lawrence on Star. God, she was so good. I miss those girls. What was I watching that gave me of those girls? To, ooh, P Valley. That'll be back with those girls. Oh, this is when Candy gets ready to go country. If you're out in the club, don't think I'm not. Even if you're out making love, don't think I'm not. Okay, we fast-forwarded through Kim getting to her rental that she got sued for later. Child, so Candy go out to the range to meet with some country artist. You may call me vindictive if you want, but... <laughs> that heifer said, that's real country. My stuff is more groove-oriented. If you're willing to start from scratch. <laughs> she said, start from scratch. Throw the whole song away. Now that's vindictive. It's 15 minutes until the Barely Agency opening party and Mal walks in. Does Mal ever not have a stank face? So of course everything's going wrong before Cynthia's party because Cynthia don't know what she's doing and neither does Mal. Fortunately, people actually showed up because they wanted the free craft services and a little camera time on Bravo. Meanwhile, Mal is whining at the party. I was here till midnight helping clean up. Where was Peter? Peter was at a pool party. Now he here for the glam. Cynthia said she wanted to do it all by herself, so she drafted you. You're the dutiful older sister. Or younger sister, but you look older. It's that stank face. That magic a duck stank face. Candy gets out of a $100,000 Mercedes with a $40 Decatur quick weave in her head. Mm. And it looks sweat out. Girl, your head looking like that and you call yourself stepping it up? Oh, Felon Pox and Felon Nida arrived to the party. Oh, goodness, and that Hervé dress does nothing for Phaedra's non-figure. Her lack of hip and her tiny bust. Ooh. It just... It just accentuates the negative and eliminates the positive. You want to call being a lawyer guaranteed money? When have you lawyered, Phaedra? When have you look? You can't win a case to save your life and you want to call that guaranteed money? You haven't had a client that you made money off of since Bobby Brown. 
but you want to say that's guaranteed money? You're running around from Wee TV show to Wee TV show claiming last names that aren't even yours, Mrs. Braxton, and you want to talk about guaranteed money? You're out here pretending to be bo girlfriends of Tyler Perry actors, and you want to talk about guaranteed money? You're a felon and a fool. You're just upset that you look like an owl and you'll never be as pretty as Cynthia. You're jealous, and I can see right through you. Oh, goodness, so now Sheree complaining about air conditioning. I mean, I guess you got central AC in that apartment you rented, but when they went to look at your house, it was hot as hell, too. So this is the first time Nene and Kim are in the same room. Oh, God, the back of Nene's head. Oh, that shit is worn out. I mean, if you're going to have it that dirty rock brown, you at least got to get those roots. Nene used to be a model back in the day. I, she modeled clown wigs. That's where she got her collection from. All right, so now Marlo go up to Candy and Kim and talk about Big Mama. I heard you were Big Mama, Candy. So Marlo walks up to Kim and Candy and says, Candy, why were you grilling me about my Big Papa? And she just keeps saying Big Papa in front of Kim. A Big Papa, Big Papa. So Marlo says, well, since you want to talk about asking Candy, I could ask you about your status as a Big Mama and taking care of guys. And Candy says, oh, oh, Look at this hair. Look at this makeup. You know I'm too cheap for that. Meanwhile, Nene and her dry wig are laughing at Marlo saying Big Papa every five minutes. Kim finally says, I don't want to talk about Big Papa. I've got to go. Derek J, you ain't shit. You gonna say bye to Kim? So Cynthia's thanking everybody, her sister, her mama, and then Penelope Thomas. But Penelope's nowhere to be found. He is not about to share his stage with them licensed hiding heifers. He is still butt hurt. I mean, he's hurt down to his prostate. Sore and tender. No wonder that sour little marriage didn't work. All right, well, let's get to love and hip hop. <laughs> 